Did you hear the? Okay, it just it's it's starting to record. So am I uh, am I good to go? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, my name is Robert Denninger, and I am an alcoholic, and uh, I have been sober since March 26, two thousand fourteen. Um, the first thing I want to say is thank you um, for the opportunity to visit with you and grow my fellowship. Um, technology allows us to reach around the world, which is really amazing. And um, I'm grateful for the opportunity and the privilege to visit with, uh, with you all today. So thank you very much. Um, I'd like to start off just by um, acknowledging that... <clears throat> I believe it's an honor to be an alcoholic on, on this side of alcoholism, on the recover recovery journey side of alcoholism. Uh, Bill W. said, and this is from As Bill Sees It on page 133, your misfortune has become your fortune. You AAs are a privileged people. Um, I believe that to be true today. I... Um, People would say that to me when I first got into Alcoholics Anonymous, or I'd hear it in meetings, and I was just really turned off by that. I couldn't understand how anybody would ever say such a thing. And uh, now that I'm coming up on almost nine years of sobriety, it all starts to make a little more sense. Um, another thing in the doctor's opinion, um, second to last paragraph, it says later, he requested the privilege of being allowed to tell his story to other patients here. And with some misgiving, we consented, meaning that the hospital consented and allowed him to do that. And once again, it's a privilege to be able to share my story because it allows me to connect to God and it allows me to stay sober one more day at a time. Um, so one thing I've noticed when I've shared my story in the past is I either spend way too much time on what it was like before I got sober or way too much time after. And what I'm going to try and do today is talk about what it was like before, what happened and what it was like after. So translate. Namaskaram, Mr. Lara. I know. పేరు రాబర్ట్ బి ఆయన సొబ్రైటీ డేట్ వచ్చి మా ముందు కృతజ్ఞత చెప్తున్నారు ఇంకోటి ఏంటంటే ఆయన సొబ్రైటీ డేట్ వచ్చి మార్చి ఇరవై ఆరు రెండు వేల పద్నాలుగు ఆయన ముందు ఈ టెక్నాలజీ వల్ల మన ఫెలోషిప్ పెరుగుతుంది మిమ్మల్ని అందరిని కలవటం వీలవుతుంది అని అంటున్నారు ఇంకోటి ఏం చెప్తున్నారంటే బిల్ డబ్ల్యూ గారు పుస్తకంలో రాశారు ఏంటంటే ఈయన చెప్పేది కూడా ఏంటంటే బాబు నా అదృష్టం ప్రివిలేజ్ అన్నారు ఓకే అంటే కొంతమంది వ్యక్తులకే దొరుకుద్ది అవకాశం ఒక అవకాశం లాంటిది అనమాట ఇది ఏదో ఊరికనే వచ్చేది కాదు ఈ అవకాశం దొరకటం నా అదృష్టం ఏంటి ఒక తాగుబోతుగా పుట్టటం దాని తర్వాత రికవరీలోకి రావటం ఈ ఏపు ఉంటే రికవరీ ఏపు ఉంటే నా అదృష్టం రికవరీ ఏపు లేకపోతే నా దురదృష్టం అలాగే బిల్ డబ్ల్యూ గారు కూడా అదే రాస్తారు ఆ పుస్తకంలో బాబు మీ తాగుబోతులు అంటారు నిజంగా అదృష్టవంతులు రా బాబు మీకు ఈ ఆధ్యాత్మిక దొరుకుతుంది ఈయన మొదట్లో మీటింగ్లో తినేటప్పుడు చిరాక్ వచ్చేది అని మా అదృష్టం అంటాడు ఏంట్రా బాబు తాగుబోతుగా పుట్టడం కాకపోతే ప్రోగ్రామ్ చేయగా చేయగా ఈయనకి అర్థం అవుతుంది ఆ అదృష్టం ఏంటి అని చెప్పి అలాగే మన పుస్తకంలో బిగ్ బుక్ లో రాసి ఉంటుంది ఏంటి మళ్ళీ అక్కడ కూడా ఇది నా ఈ అవకాశం దొరకటం నా అదృష్టం అన్నట్టు ప్రివిలేజ్ అన్నట్టు దేవ అవకాశం ఇంకొక మిత్రుడికి నా కథ చెప్పటం ఆ బుక్ లో రాసింది అది ఈ మిత్రులకి నా కథ చెప్తూ నా గొప్ప అవకాశం భావిస్తున్నాను అన్నట్టు రాస్తాడు సో అలాగే ఈ రోజు నాకు ఈ అవకాశం రావటం కూడా అదొక ఒక గొప్ప అవకాశంగా భావిస్తున్నాను ఒక అదృష్టంగా కథ మామూలుగా చెప్పినప్పుడు నేను 
మొత్తం నాకు తాగుడు గురించి ఎక్కువ చెప్పేస్తూ ఉంటాను లేకపోతే తాగుడు తర్వాత ఏ రికవరీ గురించి ఎక్కువ చెప్పేస్తూ ఉంటా అలా కాకుండా రెండు బ్యాలెన్స్ చేయడానికి ఈ రోజు ప్రయత్నిస్తాను రాబర్ట్ యూ కెన్ గో హెడ్ రైట్ ఐ హెడ్ రియల్ గ్రేట్ చైల్డ్ హుడ్ all of my my needs were met and the vast majority of my wants were met my father worked for frito lay and um we moved around the country a little bit but everywhere we went i had uh, amazing friends and uh i i have a great family um so i i definitely don't uh at least that i can recall have any you know like early childhood trauma or anything like that um i do come from a drinking family uh i think i have a, a an uncle that's an alcoholic but for the most part um <clears throat> i thought i thought drinking was just what grown ups did i i thought it was something that was pretty much accepted in most cultures i had been uh, um you know uh that i had seen or experienced i really didn't think too much of it um the night of new year's eve when 1999 turned into year 2000 um i believe i was 15 or 16 years old um all the grown ups had gone to bed my aunts and uncles were asleep but i had a few cousins that were still awake and um they opened up a bottle of champagne and started kind of just passing it around and um i had some and you know champagne doesn't taste nearly as bad as beer or liquor um it's been a long time but i think it's it's just a lot more sweet and i remember um they kept passing that bottle around and all of a sudden i started to feel good and i don't mean good like well rested or just got out of the hot tub or sauna i mean i felt better than i had ever felt and um i ended up throwing up that night and getting all dizzy and and all that and the next morning i felt horrible but i just I felt like I had found a magical secret. Um, you know, it uh it obviously it all started out as fun. I had a lot of good times early on drinking with friends. Um and as my story progresses, what we'll see is that it started out as 100% fun and then it was, you know, um uh, fun and problems and by the end of it it was just 100% problems. Um translate థ్యాంక్ యూ యా సో నేను మామూలుగా నాకు మంచి ప్రేమించే కుటుంబంలోనే పుట్టానండి మా మా నాన్నగారు ఉద్యోగ రీత్యా కొంచెం అటు ఇటు వెళ్ళే వాళ్ళం కానీ ఆ ఊరు ఈ ఊరు వెళ్ళే వాళ్ళం కానీ నాకు పెద్దగా ప్రాబ్లమ్స్ ఉండేవి కాదు నాకు కావాల్సినవి అన్ని నాకు సమర్పించేవారు అన్నప్పుడు ట్రామా అది కొంచెం తాగే ఫ్యామిలీ సరదాగా తాగుతూ ఉంటుంది పార్టీల్లో అది సో నేను కూడా తాగుడంటే పెద్ద ఏదో తప్పు కింద ఏమి భావించేవాడిని కాదు ఒకసారి పద్నాలుగు పదిహేను ఏళ్ళు వయసు అప్పుడు పంతొమ్మిది వందల తొంభై తొమ్మిది అనుకుంటాను అప్పుడు మామూలుగా ఇంట్లో పార్టీ జరిగింది అందరూ పెద్దలు అందరూ వెళ్ళి పడుకున్నారు మేము అందరం కజిన్స్ ఉన్నాము మా కజిన్స్ అందరూ కూడా ఒక షాంపేన్ బాటిల్ ఓపెన్ చేసాము షాంపేన్ బాటిల్ ఓపెన్ చేసినప్పుడు మాకు ఏంటంటే నాకు మామూలుగా అప్పుడు చెప్పారు షాంపేన్ అంటే బియర్ లాగా విస్కీ లాగా ఉంటుంది బాగానే ఉంటుంది అని చాలా రోజులు అయింది దాన్ని రుచి కూడా నాకు గుర్తులేదు సరిగ్గా గత ఆ రోజు తాగాను నేను షాంపేను తాగినప్పుడు నాకు చాలా బాగా అనిపించిందండి బాగా అనిపించడం అంటే ఏదో రెస్ట్ గా లేకపోతే రెస్ట్ తీసుకున్నట్టు అనిపించడం కాదు బాగుండింది చాలా బాగుండింది ఆ ఫీలింగ్ నెక్స్ట్ డే మటుకు బాగా తలకాయ నొప్పి లేసాను అది గుర్తుంది అప్పటి నుంచి ఫస్ట్ లో అంతా హండ్రెడ్ పర్సెంట్ ఫన్ ఉండేదండి తాగుడు చాలా బాగుండేది స్టార్టింగ్ లో దాని తర్వాత మటుకు కొంచెం ఫన్ కొంచెం ప్రాబ్లమ్స్ ఉండేవి లాస్ట్ మటుకు హండ్రెడ్ పర్సెంట్ ప్రాబ్లమ్స్ తయారైనవి నా తాగుడి జీవితం అలా సాగింది అంటున్నారు ప్లీజ్ ప్లీజ్ గోహెడ్ 
so when I got to high school, uh, I was very involved in athletics. I played a lot of soccer, football, track, and uh, I got along with everybody. I had a lot of different groups of friends, um, and I really enjoyed that experience. I was actually senior class president of 608 students, and I was captain of the soccer team. And so life was really good for me. Um, everything, every year seemed to just get better. And I just kind of had this expectation that that's how life life worked. Um, I went to college at SMU, Southern Methodist University in Dallas, Texas, and I had very high expectations going in. And um, what happened was I very quickly became a, uh, a small fish in a very big pond. And I was intimidated by that. Um, there were kids that came from families from, with incredible wealth that I really hadn't been exposed to before. And I felt really small for the first time in my life. Um, I started to isolate quite a bit more, spend time by myself. And uh, my drinking started to really pick up. And um, what I started to realize is I would make promises to myself about when or how I was going to drink. And sure enough, I could keep promises to myself in other parts of my life. But when it came to drinking, I was not uh, able to keep promises um, to myself about how I was going to drink. Um, I ended up spending my junior year in London, England for eight and a half months. Um, I started to smoke marijuana. Um, I started to drink very, very heavily to where I'd wake up and not know what time it was or where I was. I got injured a few times. I got into fights on the streets sometimes. Um, I was robbed and uh, and knocked out in the street. Um, I had broken ribs one time and I slept outside a few times, just kind of passing out outside. So um, I would go out with friends to dance or have fun. And then I would kind of go off by myself and just get very, very drunk and meet all sorts of people. Um, I'll, I'll translate there. Yeah. Uh, so I, uh, intended, um, pretty sounds wrong or, uh, Bane L2 LA and you don't, and then the Tautuna Sare football, I do arena, soccer, I go American football, a la vera, art, la vera, I do, uh, in a college youth and high school youth, don't manager get. Uh, students with the president of the Jesarina. So, sounds from the Paravata sounds from Chala Bajarige Bajarige. So, I just want one clarification. You were talking about somebody's wealth, right? What was uh, that again? Yeah, at, at SMU, a lot of the kids came from very, very rich families. Oh, SMU is the London college you went to. No, no, no. SMU is in Dallas, Texas, and that's the college I went to in yeah. Dallas, where I was exposed to extremely wealthy okay. kids, and it made me made me feel small. Okay, so but you still went to London, also, right? So I was just yes, I I studied abroad my junior year, so my uh, third year of college I I spent in London, England. Okay, thank you. So oh, you know, okay, okay, manch college lo gora seat achhi. Manch college and test and you got the intended and run the road up the double on all join out the room. I intend to all under Mundu in kitchen again pitch it on the double on all Mundu in the kitchen again pitch it in a Tagur Buddha than Valconcho Equendi than Travata London law. Uh, London lo intente oga oga year chaliye. Aadhe college lo onna pade lo sound chhon London lo chaliye. Akar konsho vere ante ganjai hotato. Baaghe ekhu taagato. Theriu pein taagur theriu pein di sound chhon. Ani answer na re. Please go ahead. Okay, great. Um, when I got home from London, I had a physical with my doctor. And my blood numbers and liver numbers came back bad. And he had asked me, have you been drinking a lot? And I said, yes. And uh, he said, this is, this is pretty serious. Your, your numbers are horrible. And um, 
And so I, I didn't drink for, I think, a month. And I went back and I had my laps done again and everything was fine. And I just figured, you know, I'm a young guy and it's just kind of a rite of passage. And uh, I didn't I didn't really change uh, it, it. It just, you know, in one ear and out the other. Um, so I actually ended up uh, working for a summer camp for terminally ill children in Florida uh, and on one of the weekends, we would get the weekends off. I, I would go to the beach, get a cheap hotel room by myself and drink very heavily. And I ended up getting robbed at gunpoint and had everything stolen from me, my hotel key, my wallet. Um, I, I ended up, uh, moving to Charleston and moving in with some people, um, uh, and, uh, I remember my dad before I moved to Charleston said, Rob, see if just go 60 days without drinking and get your, get a, get a job interview, get your body in shape, take care of yourself and just see if you can do it. And I think I made it about 40 or 45 days and I just could not, you know, they, they say that frothy emotional appeal, um, in the doctor's opinion, um, have the utmost respect for my dad. We have a great relationship and always have, but I just could not keep promises to myself when they had to do with alcohol. Um, then I ended up uh, living in Jacksonville, Florida um, a few months later. And I remember I got a DUI and I was arrested for the first time. And it was through that process that I was introduced to Alcoholics Anonymous. Um, I had to ride my bike everywhere because I couldn't drive. And I, uh, I remember um, going to Alcoholics Anonymous for the first time and thinking, I like the honesty of these people and the humility of these people, but I am not one of them. I was not ready to stop drinking. Translate, please. So in uh, London, in Jayanakra, I have a physical exam for a doctor. I have to add the numbers to the doctor. I have to add the doctor to the doctor. I have to add the doctor to the doctor. I have to add the doctor to the doctor. I have to add the doctor to the doctor. I have to add the doctor to the doctor. I have to add the doctor to the doctor. ఒక ఉద్యోగం తెచ్చుకోరు బాబు ప్రయత్నించు తాకుండాని అంటే ఒక నాలుగై రోజులు తాకుండా ఉన్నాడు ఈయన తాకుండా ఉన్న మన బుక్కులు మన పుస్తకంలో అన్నట్టు మళ్ళీ తాగాడు మళ్ళీ తాగి మళ్ళీ కథ మామూలు అక్కడ నుంచి జాక్సన్ మీద ఫ్లోరిడా అని చెప్పి ఇంకో ఊరు మారాడు అక్కడేమో మొదటిసారి సాగుతూ వాహనం నడుపుతున్నందుకు అదే డ్రైవింగ్ అండర్ ఇన్ఫ్లుయెన్స్ అని చెప్పి అది ఒక టికెట్ పడింది పోలీస్ వాళ్ళు పట్టుకుని ఆ మొదటిసారి లైసెన్స్ తీసేసుకున్నారు సో ఎక్కడికి వెళ్ళినా ఈయన సైకిల్ మీద వెళ్ళాల్సి వచ్చేది ఆ సైకిల్ మీద వెళ్తుంటే ఈయన అప్పుడు ఆల్కాలిక్స్ అనానిమస్ పరిచయం అయింది మొదటిసారి పరిచయం అయినప్పుడు చాలా బాగా నచ్చింది ఎందుకంటే వీళ్ళందరూ చాలా నిజాయితీగా ఉన్నారు మంచివారు కాకపోతే నేను మట్టుకు తాగుబోతుని కాదు వీళ్ళు తాగుబోతులా ఉండొచ్చు నేను తాగుడు ఆపను అన్న నిర్ణయంలోనే ఉన్నారు ఇంకా Please go ahead. Okay, great. So I ended up moving back to Texas, uh, back where my family was in the Dallas area. And I, uh, I had gone to a, uh, a bar with a few of my friends and I had left once I got drunk and I ended up wrecking my truck. And uh, that was, uh, that was, I believe, in 2011 or 12. That was the last time I drank. And, um, I, I, um, I went to Alcoholics Anonymous the next day and, um, I, I stayed on the back row. I sat right by the door. Um, I didn't share. I, I, if I, I think I spent a lot of the time during the meeting, just staring kind of straight down, you know, I, um, I was in that place where I really couldn't see a future with alcohol in it because of how bad things were getting and how many problems were happening. 
but I also couldn't see a future without alcohol because I didn't really know how to handle problems or process emotions or function socially or really anything, you know, alcohol had always been kind of this reward for me. You know, if you work hard at your job for a few days, you have um, at the ability to get drunk at the end of the week. And, um, you know, if I can just hold it together for a certain amount of time, at least I know I can get drunk um, on the weekend. And I, I, that was really how I lived ever since the first time I drank, I had always used alcohol as kind of this, um, you know, kind of the carrot in front of the horse, just to keep it going through life. It was something that I used psychologically, uh, to motivate me to be somewhat productive. And, um, it just wasn't working anymore. You know, um, the, the consequences were greatly outweighing the benefits and I just couldn't see a way out. And I was not confident that Alcoholics Anonymous could help me or that anybody there could help me. I had a lot of arrogance and I had a lot of ego um, translate. So, Jackson will end up in Dallas. I was going to go to Dallas. I was going to go to Dallas. I was going to go to Marnado Alcoholics Anonymous meeting. I was going to go to the Kuchunod. I was going to go to the Kuchunod. I was going to go to the Kuchunod. ఎందుకంటే ఈయన భావాలు ఎలా ఉండేవంటే నేను తాగుడు లేకుండా ఎలా జీవించగలుగుతాను ఎందుకంటే మొట్టమొదటిసారి నుంచి తాగుడిని ఒక ఒక మోటివేటర్ గా అంటే ఒక ప్రోత్సహించే మిత్రుడు లాగా చూసాను నేను వారం రోజులు కష్టపడి పని చేయటం వీకెండ్ శుభ్రంగా తాగటం అలాగే మొదటి నుంచి కూడా నేను అలాగే ఏంటంటే ఈ కష్టపడతాను దానికి ఫలితంగా రివార్డ్ గా మందు నాకు అన్నట్టే ఉండేది ఇప్పుడేమో ఆ ఏంటంటే ఎన్నో ప్రాబ్లమ్స్ వచ్చేసినాయి నేను జీవితం జీవించలా పోతున్నాను కాకపోతే ఈ తాగుడు లేకుండా ఎలా జీవించగలుగుతాను నాకు నాకు జీవించాలని కూడా లేదు తాగుడు లేకుండా తాగుడు తోటి జీవించలా పోతున్నాను ఆల్కహాలిక్స్ అనానమస్ నాకు పనిచేస్తుంది అన్న నమ్మకం కూడా చాలా అన్నగా నాకు అసలు లేదు అప్పుడు ఆల్కహాలిక్స్ అనానమస్ నన్ను జీ మళ్ళీ నేను జీవించేలాగా చేస్తుందని ఎందుకంటే నా జీవితానికి ఎప్పుడు కూడా ఆల్కహాల్ అన్నది నా మంచి అదే మంచి తమ్ముళ్ళలాగా అన్నలాగా చూసుకునేవాడిని నాకు ఎప్పుడు కష్టపడినా దాని తర్వాత మందు ఉంటుంది అని చెప్పి చివరి చివరికి ఉత్తి మందే ఉండింది అని అంటున్నారు ప్లీజ్ గో రైట్ So what I started doing is I went to a lot of meetings physically. Um, I wanted to learn by osmosis, but I really didn't want to do the work. You know, the book talks about um, how alcohol uh, kind of uh, beats us into a state of reasonableness and, uh, and the gift of desperation and the, these phrases that we hear. And um, I just wasn't there yet. You know, I couldn't see a way. with alcohol or without it, but I just wasn't in a place where I was willing to do the work. I wasn't willing to walk up to somebody and ask them to be my sponsor. I wasn't willing to do the steps to the best of my ability. Um, I, I still kind of wanted to do things my way, you know? And um, so I remember a, a, a friend of mine um, basically grabbed my shoulders and put me in front of this guy and said, this is your sponsor, sponsor John. And he explained to me that we were going to get together and he was going to help me with the steps. And I just didn't get it. I said, what's in this for you? Cause it seemed very weird that somebody would be willing to give me their time and knowledge for nothing in return. And he said, when I help other people, it helps me stay sober. And I, I it didn't make any sense to me, but I said, okay, I guess, I guess she'll be my sponsor. And um, what sponsor, what our, what our relationship looked like, is and if you heard tom speak you may have heard him refer to the, these terms but it was kind of half aa and what that meant is i would do the assignments in a way that um i think he wanted them done or i would say things i would hold a little bit back if i had too much shame around that or i would reschedule on our meeting the day of or the day before um 
you know, AA was something I did, but it wasn't like a top priority. You know, I mean, I needed to make money. I needed to, um, you know, uh, try and be in a relationship. There were so many parts of my life that were going on and AA fit in there when it was convenient, but it really wasn't, um, you know, the, the center of my life. Translate. Okay. సో ఈయన ఏదో ఉన్నా సరే అప్పుడు ఏంటంతా సకం సకంగా పై పైన చేస్తుండ ఈయనకి దాని యొక్క ప్రాముఖ్యత అర్థమయ్యేది కాదు ఏది ఏమైందంటే ఒక రోజు ఈయన మిత్రుడు చేయి పట్టుకుని ఇదో ఇతనే నీ స్పాన్సర్ అని ఇంకొక వ్యక్తికి పరిచయం చేసి ఈయనకి అది చాలా విచిత్రంగా అనిపించింది అసలు నువ్వు నాకెందుకు హెల్ప్ చేస్తావు నీకేం వస్తుంది అంటే అని అడిగాడు అండి నీకేం వస్తుంది అంటే నేను సోదరంగా ఉంటాను నీకు హెల్ప్ చేస్తే అని ఆయన చెప్పడం జరిగింది కలిపి స్టెప్స్ చేద్దాం అన్నప్పుడు ఈయనకి ఏంటంటే సరే అంత పై పైన చేద్దాంలి ఆయన నాలనుకున్న సమాధానాలు చెప్పి అప్పుడప్పుడు సమాధానాలు ఏంటంటే దాచిపెట్టి ఒకవేళ సిగ్గది ఉంటే దాచిపెట్టి దాని తర్వాత ప్రోగ్రామ్ ని సకం సకం చేసుకుంటూ వెళ్తూ ఉండేవారు అనమాట ప్లీజ్ గో హెడ్ ప్లీజ్ గో హెడ్ ఓకే గ్రేట్ So I was kind of doing AA halfway and I I have horrible allergies in the in the Texas area the the pollen is awful and so I uh I the only thing that could get me to stop coughing was hydrocodone cough syrup which is a opiate based uh medication and so I remember uh I'd had some issues with that in the past a little bit and I'd shown I told my sponsor that and he always said look if you take a medicine that a doctor prescribes to you and you take it within the instructions that's not uh that's not a break in your sobriety but if you take too much or take it too often you, you would forfeit your sobriety and i i you know this was years ago and i hadn't worked the steps but i i think that i could do it and uh i remember i got some of that medicine from the doctor and uh i uh there was no way i could control the way i took cough medicine and so um i ended up going to meetings on that stuff and not telling my sponsor that i was taking way too much of that cough medicine i was going to different doctors i was getting it off the internet and um just living in a lie um and even though i wasn't drinking i tried to justify that um that this somehow wasn't as bad or it's not the same and um you know i i had gone a year or two without drinking and my business had done a lot better so i actually had some money in my pocket and i got involved in gambling i got involved in sports betting and uh had some issues with that um you know the 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 problem with me is it's never enough i i always want more whether that's alcohol cough medicine gambling um you know cuz i hadn't done the steps i hadn't connected to a higher power to solve my problem so i'm just running around a complete glutton for instant gratification i'm completely addicted to instant gratification what's going to make me feel better than i feel now and make me feel it soon um that that's my issue um i uh i ended up having a massive drug overdose on cough syrup and some other medicines and i um i was rushed to the hospital and i remember i was waking up and and um everybody was saying breathe breathe and they pulled a tube out of my throat and as soon as i could speak i said dad i've got to get out of here i'm in a wedding i'm a groomsman in a wedding and he said well rob when is the wedding and i said the wedding is on saturday night and he said well robert you just woke up from a drug overdose coma it's sunday afternoon you've missed the wedding translate so you know
Kartik, some uh, issues with your voice, lagging. Hey, can you can you hear me? Yeah. Karthik, can you hear me? Can you hear me? He's not able to hear. Uh, Robert, that there is something a problem with uh, his voice. Arthur, are you there? It's going to rejoin, uh, Robert. Oh, okay. Thank you. Some internet issue. The voice is lagging. Wait a minute, okay? Okay. Okay. Uh, I think uh, uh, my translation was uh, broken a little bit. Uh, okay. So let me continue. Karthik, so you put a lag in the middle of the day. Huh? You put a lag in the middle of the day. You put a lag in the middle of the day. Yeah. సో ఈయన హాస్పిటల్లో డ్రగ్ ఓవర్ డోస్తో లెగిసాడు అనమాట సో డ్రగ్ ఓవర్ డోస్తో లెగిసి నేను పెళ్ళికి వెళ్ళాలి నాన్న నువ్వు ఇక్కడ నుంచి బయటకు వెళ్ళాలంటే పెళ్ళి ఎప్పుడు బాబు అంటే శనివారం సాయంకాలం అంటే ఈరోజు ఆదివారం నువ్వు డ్రగ్ ఇండ్యూస్ కోమాలో ఉన్నావు రెండు రోజుల నుంచి అని చెప్పడం జరిగింది వాళ్ళ నాన్నగారి ఇంతో ప్లీజ్ గో హెడ్ థ్యాంక్ యూ సో So I had to spend a few days in the hospital and I remember this was the this was where it really started to hit me that I was not going to live very long if my life continued the way it was going. And what was odd about that is I actually felt some relief in that situation because it was clear to me it wasn't it wasn't a uh, half fun half problem issue anymore it was an all problem it was a uh, i am completely screwed if something doesn't change drastically there was a you know they treat you very different in the hospital when you're there because of a self inflicted drug overdose than if you're there due to a stroke or a heart issue or something like that uh they they're really not as kind um and i remember there was a young nurse that was very kind to me and i asked her should i go to treatment or not and she said well young man that's entirely uh, a function of perspective if you think it's going to be a waste of time and money then that's exactly what it's going to be but if you're ready to change your life it's probably going to be the the best investment you ever make and i'll never forget her saying that to me um 
I had a little bit of fear about what people at church and my friends and at work would think about me leaving for a month or two to get help. Um, but I had no choice. I, I, I was ready. You know, I was finally ready for the first time to dive into uh, to getting well the way that I used to dive into getting drunk. And um, and I went to a place called Sierra Tucson, which is in Arizona. And um, rehab for me was an amazing experience. I loved it. I, I cried like the first seven to 10 days I was there. I started to learn how to express my feelings. Um, I, um, I, I started to, to like see that vulnerability and masculinity uh, could go together. Um, it was just a, an amazing experience for me. I absolutely loved uh, treatment. Uh, translate. Thank you. So, you know, hospital legs like even that day, cha mamalga vere jabbul to hospital onte me mal vere ga jostar. Adhe drug overdose to onte vere ga jostar. Manta anta anta mito anta baga ondran mat. Kato ka nurse mat ko chala ba choose kinda no. Nurse no question again. Enta mamar na treatment kello manta wani. Rehab center. Adi ni batto onte de no marali an kunte. మీ జీవితంలో అదే అతి ముఖ్యమైన పెట్టుబడి అవుతుంది అదే నువ్వు మారాలి అని లేకపోతే అది వేస్ట్ అవుతుంది నీ ఉద్దేశం మీద ఉంటది అంటే మారాలని ఉండింది టూసాన్ అరిజోనాలో ఒక మంచి ట్రీట్మెంట్ సెంటర్కి వెళ్ళారు చాలా అద్భుతంగా ఉండిందండి నా అనుభవము ఆ రీహ్యాబ్ లో మొదటి ఏడు రోజులు ఏడుస్తూనే ఉన్నాను అప్పుడు అర్థమైంది నా ఫీలింగ్స్ నేను అలాగే ఎక్స్ప్రెస్ చేయాలి అని చెప్పి లోపల నా భావాల్ని మానసిక భావాల్ని బయటకు ఎలా చెప్పాలి అని చెప్పి ఇలాగా నా శక్తిహీనత నా మగతనం రెండు కలిపి ఉండొచ్చు అని కూడా అర్థమైంది ఏంటంటే నా బలహీనత శక్తిహీనత నా బలహీనత నా నేను మగాన్ని అవటం రెండు కలిపి ఉండొచ్చు అని నాకు అప్పుడు అర్థమైంది మంచి ఎక్స్పీరియన్స్ నాకు ఆ రీహ్యాబ్ ది అని ఇప్పుడు ఈసారి నేను ప్రోగ్రామ్ గట్టిగా చేద్దాం అని పూర్తిగా దూకేశాను ఎందుకంటే ఇంత ముందు తాగుడు కోసం నేను ఎలా దూకాను గట్టిగా తాగుదాం అని ఈసారి రీహ్యాబ్ అదే రీహ్యాబ్ లో ప్రోగ్రామ్ సరిగ్గా చేద్దాం అని అలా దూకాను అదే స్ఫూర్తితోటి శక్తితోటి అని చెప్ Please go ahead. Okay, great. So when I get out of a, a rehab, I decide to go to sober living, which is kind of like a transitionary time from not having my cell phone, being surrounded by the same people in a very controlled environment to kind of like shifting back into normal life. I'm not sure if they have that in India, but it's it's a big business in the U.S. And, um, and I decided to, to do it. And um, that also was an awesome experience. I remember... the the head of my house i i was i signed a contract to do 30 days there and part of the agreement was that i would get a local sponsor in the scottsdale arizona area i didn't want to do that i had a sponsor back home in dallas so i thought that was kind of silly to get a sponsor for two or three weeks and so i um i remember the the head of the house came to me about halfway through my stay and said uh you need to get a sponsor or i'm going to kick you out of the house you you made an agreement and and so i think it was the day the next day or the day after that i was in a meeting in scottsdale and a guy with over 20 years sobriety started talking about how he doesn't really work with new guys anymore if he gets approached he might maybe work with them but he's just kind of cruising right now you know he's been around a long time and really really just wasn't feeling the need to do a whole lot of 12 step work and then the next guy that shared said I hope the fruits of my recovery never take me to a place where I say or think anything like what we just heard. And that man uh, is my sponsor uh, today. And I asked him to be my sponsor that day because I knew after he said that he couldn't turn me down. And I uh, that that was Tommy O'Rourke. And he has given me permission to use his name uh, in any story. And so um, Tom is my sponsor. I'm very close to Tom. Um, and. I will say that what our relationship looked like in the beginning was me complaining a lot and him 
uh, explaining to me kind of what accountability was and then diving right into the doctor's opinion and the step work. So I remember I didn't have a car out there and I said, Tom, you know, they're making me go to two meetings a day. It's like six miles. I can't do that. All the other guys at the house have cars. I don't. And he said, Rob, I, I did, did you did you sign a contract agreeing to going to two meetings a day? And I said, yeah. And he said, well, then I don't know what we're talking about, you know. And what's funny is after we had that discussion, um, I went to two meetings a day. I found a way through through other friends there and the guy that ran the house, get, having him give me rides. Um, it was beautiful to see how our excuses are made in our minds, you know, and um, and, and they're, they're, they're not really real a lot of the time. Um, translate, please. So, rehab by Paika, I could sober living than on time, apartment low, like the little on time. I could undal and time, you could rules on time, but contracts and contract sign Yasper. A contract in a sign is at the rose through the meeting with Kaltano, local sponsor and this contract. Kathani in quality of a sponsor on Nadu, Dallas. Mali can name Unde Munaluara, Mali sponsor and Ku Ankunadina. Ah, you got a path of Yapa America or sober living. Ah, Kakpote in a Padihan Rose Lunaka into one or two, which it era Babu sponsor this Kunavan. This Kopotinu by Kil Pulse of the Anne. Sara and JP meeting law, Rose meeting Gilded, the other these Kona Lane. El Pudo, Ravel, so bright you nine, share Yasta. Nen imagine I cook a tolso panjet leather, Chala Panjas and Anipesende, who put a bane on the Jivoto, smooth gay, Lipotende, and Dan Taravatunko kind. Got the wife break out on this. Sir, why is break out also? At least signal problem, and so hello. Hey, Carthage. Yes, Carthage. Yeah. Okay. So that signal problem, we can't do much. Uh, so meeting record out in the Gavati. Yeah, you never record with it. <laughs> okay. So, uh, uh, end and day. Ah, Naku share yes Napu next to Chinamanishi, what I'm not Babu in Tamunimir and Narga the Ravel Zobrati at the name put named Kotolto Panjit Leather. Ah, Paristitkin and a Pudu Rakur, the Narikari Falitalu, a Paristit Tis Krakur than Jeppi and Tea. A pudding immediately in Nachedu, I am sponsor the Tis Court and Jerigendi, Tim and Jeppi Male Mona Poin Warman meeting over the Matra de Dana or on Varal Mundo. Uh, I in this court on Jarite, I in a permission in Chad and Time Pier Chaparanke, so Chapterman. Aros non Giros the kind of sponsor and Chapterman. Uh, please go ahead uh, and Robert. Okay, great. Thank you, Karthik. Um, so, what was interesting is that even though I had done my best to really uh, exert myself and learn as much as I could at treatment, um, if you had asked me, are you an alcoholic? I would have said yes. And if you had said why, I would have said, I really don't know because the consequences were bad. Um, if you had asked me, what is an alcoholic? I would have had no clue what to tell you. And so what was interesting is that one of the first things when Tom and I started working together, 
he took me into one of those dark AA rooms and we got, we each had a big book and we read the doctor's opinion and we read it slowly and we read it sentence by sentence. And what I realized through reading that book with somebody who had gone before me and who understood the book somewhat, uh, or at least a lot better than I did, um, is that we started talking about things like when I'm not drinking, I want to be drinking, whether I'm, I, I use alcohol to punish myself or as a reward. Um, basically, there's this mental obsession side of the disease, meaning because I, I've never done the steps, I'm not spiritually fit. I have an obsession to use alcohol to change the way I feel. So there's this mental obsession side of the thing. And then the other part of the disease for me is that once I put alcohol in my body, I forfeit control of how much I'm going to take. So I see alcoholism based off of my understanding of the doctor's opinion and my work with Tom is a two-part disease. It's a mental obsession that maybe I can not drink for a day, a week, a month, maybe even a year. But if I'm not spiritually fit, eventually alcohol will beat Robert every time. It just might take a while. Once alcohol is in my body and the phenomenon of craving slash physical allergy takes over, I lose all control on how much I'm going to take and what's going to happen. And the book tells me in the doctor's opinion that it, it may not even happen every time. I might be able to drink controlled sometimes, but if it ever happens to where I drink more than I, I set out to drink, then I'm probably an alcoholic. So um, that was really important for me to hear because it took a lot of the shame and guilt away and made it a lot more matter of fact. Um, and then the decision wasn't so much, am I, am I an alcoholic or not? The decision was, what am I going to do about it? And that's where the rest of the steps came in. Um, translate, please. So, Aaron, uh, in a step work model, it no put in sponsor to a room low book book to Kuchin or retro. The Antlon Chadu to Chapter Nag Indos Lun in Tago Botan complete Namako and the Katinth Kanta Naparistil Daritranga Tire in a job. Katha Nizanga in Tuta Botano step work model at Tegartoin. In the Kante Nenu, you put the Tago da Pesna. Okay, Nene put the Tago da Pesna. Mali Tagal and Korika obsession of Chet. In the Kanta Tagul Lakunda Naku Prashanta Tundel Malin and a Prokapur Mali Tirigit Tauta Nene Prut Tagur Gurin Jalo Chiston, Tanokasara, Mali Tirigit Tagina Pro, Malia allergy model. Allergy model in Dantin and Tautune. So, Robert and our Indy Rosal Doranga Una Mandarinji Kachitango Rose Tauta. And the other end, Tagbotan, Katupuru, Prashna and Tente than Gurinjin in India Akade Meta so Panaloste. I guess the Neni Jabununchi Surukshetango undergo. Please go ahead. Great, thank you. So what things look like for me today and kind of my experience with the uh, with the steps the first time I did them to the best of my ability is um, the three the three uh, attributes that are described at the end of the um, spiritual experience at the back of our book, uh, honesty, open minded and willingness. I'm not these things all the time, uh, but I sure try. And uh, I have to be honest with my sponsor and even something that came up recently, you know, like um, shame and guilt uh, can really work against honesty because I want to keep those things to myself and I don't want to be vulnerable. Um, but sometimes it takes, you know, sometimes I'll, I'll behave in a way or, or something will happen and I may not tell my sponsor immediately, but um, over the last eight and a half years of working with my sponsor, I do tell him the truth. And uh, um, it's it's important to have a sponsor that you trust and that can exhibit grace as well as sternness when necessary and, uh, and honesty, you know. Um, if all we did was value each other's feelings, we'd never recover, you know. Uh, some of this work, in my experience, is incredibly difficult and challenging, but absolutely necessary. It's the medicine that makes me well as an alcoholic. It's the step work. So 
You know, step one for me uh, um, wasn't very difficult um, through reading the doctor's opinion and understanding my powerlessness uh, to alcohol um, and the the unmanageability of my life. I, I, you know, before I went through rehab and treatment, I think I would have argued and fought that because I just wasn't there yet. But by the time I was at that point, I was uh, completely surrendered to the fact that I needed something other than myself to solve my alcohol problem. Um, steps two and three, honestly, were a little awkward for me. Um, my teenage years were spent heavily involved in Christianity. And I was... Um, I felt a little blasphemous because what I was asked to do is write down the traits you want in a higher power. And nobody had ever given me a forum to do that. Who am I to decide those things or have a voice or a say or an opinion in that? It had always been told to me what God was. And so it almost felt a little blasphemous. But what I had to realize is that even though that experience as a teenager was very good and I'm very grateful for it at that point in my recovery, it wasn't able to solve my drug and alcohol problem. I needed something else. And so I was willing to do that exercise translate. So mother, so Panantala, so Lugo Chinandi, and the end of the pen and tall, Tagurumund Shakti and on the name, especially the Yab go. వెళ్ళే ముందు అయితే అర్థమై ఉండకపోవచ్చు కాకపోతే ఒక్కసారి ఆ ఓవర్ డోస్ ఏరియా వెళ్ళేసరికి నాకు అర్థమైపోయింది నాతో నా వల్ల కాదు ఆపట తాగుడు ఎవరొకరు సహాయం కావాలని కూడా అర్థమైంది ఆ అన్మేనేజబిలిటీ కూడా జీవితంలో ఏంటి అన్నది అర్థమైంది నాకు నా జీవితం అంత అస్తవ్యస్తమైందని అర్థమైంది కాకపోతే రెండు మూడు సోపానానికి వచ్చేసరికి నేను నా టీ టీనేజ్ వయసు అంతా కూడా క్రిస్టియానిటీలో గడిపాను క్రైస్తవ మతంలో ఆ మతంలో గడిపినప్పుడు నాకు ఏంటంటే నీ దేవుడు ఎలా ఉండాలి అనుకుంటున్నావు నువ్వు రాయి అన్నప్పుడు నాకు నేనవన్నీ దేవుడు ఎలా ఉండాలో చెప్పడానికి ఇది చాలా బ్లాస్ఫమస్ అంటే ఇది పాపం కింద అనిపించింది నేనెవరిని దేవుడి గురించి ఎలా ఉండాలో రాయడానికి అని కాకపోతే ఒకసారి ఇది ఏంటంటే చేయటం మొదలు పెట్టాక చాలా సులువుగా ఉంది అని చెప్తున్నారు ప్లీజ్ గో హెడ్ ఓకే గ్రేట్ థ్యాంక్ యూ సో వన్ ఐ గా మై వన్ ఇయర్ చెప్ టామ్ ఫ్లూ ఫ్రమ్ ఫీనిక్స్ టు ఫ్లూ ఫ్రమ్ ఫీనిక్స్ ఎరిజోనా టు డాలస్ టెక్సస్ అండ్ మెట్ మై ఫ్యామిలీ అండ్ హీ ఇంట్రడ్యూస్ మీ వన్ ఐ గా మై వన్ ఇయర్ చెప్ అండ్ వన్ ఐ వన్ ఐ రిసీవ్ మై చెప్ అట్ మై హోమ్ గ్రూప్ Um, there was a line in the big book that I read and it's on page 46 and it says, much to our relief, we discovered we did not need to consider another's conception of God. And that, that was just really, really powerful for me. And it still is today, because that means that regardless of anybody's religion on this call or belief system, we all struggle from alcoholism and we can talk and we can help each other and we can work together, uh, to stay alive. Um, and, um, and I just think that's such a beautiful thing. I, I haven't, um, ever been a part of any sort of group, uh, where there's that much, uh, freedom, um, in, in, uh, when it comes to a deity or a God or a higher power. And, you know, even in, at my home group, we have people from all socioeconomic backgrounds, all races. um different sexualities all sorts of different things and yet everybody finds a way um through through the steps and the traditions uh to help each other and uh it's just a very beautiful thing and i'm very grateful that alcoholics anonymous allows that freedom um when it comes to a higher power steps four and five um you know so since my sponsor was i don't know five or a uh, thousand miles away When I got back to Dallas, I'd only done, I think, steps one, two, and maybe a little bit of three with him. But I had to, I wrote out my inventory and I would uh, scan it and email it to him. And then we would talk by phone. And this is before COVID and Zoom and all that. So a lot of my work I did over the phone. And I would always say, you want to work with a sponsor in person if you can. But there was just something about my relationship with Tom that... Uh, 
You know, there, there were times where we thought, you know, when I got back to Dallas, I'd find somebody else here, but we just continued to work together. And I'm so grateful for that. Um, but I, I, I remember that the, before I had gone, but my first time when I was doing AA, when I was kind of just half, half, I went out on the amends. It was step nine that, uh, I just couldn't handle. And, um, I was very eager to get there and to do that work, um, so um, the fifth step, surprisingly, was fairly easy to me because I was eager. I was ready to tell my truth and move past it. Um, and so we got that done. And I'll, uh, I guess we'll uh, translate there, please. Karthik, uh, you there? Yeah. Uh, okay. So... Um... ఈయన మొదటి సొబ్రైటీ డేట్కి ఈ స్పాన్సర్ ఒక్క నుంచి ఫ్లై అయ్యి వచ్చాడండి ఇలా కుటుంబాన్ని అది కూడా కలిశాడు మొదటి గ్రాటిట్యూడ్ డే రోజు ఈయన బిగ్ బుక్ నుంచి ఒక లైన్ కూడా చదివాడు మీటింగ్లో ఏంటంటే మన ఉన్నత శక్తి ఎవరు మనకి చెప్పక్కర్లేదు మనమే ఎంచుకోవచ్చు దాంట్లో ఉన్న దాంట్లో ఉన్న అది సులువు చేస్తుంది మనకి యొక్క లైన్ యొక్క అర్థం అది ఎవరో మనకి ఎవరు ఉండాలో చెప్పక్కర్లేదు ఉన్నత శక్తి మనమే ఎంచుకోవచ్చు ఉన్నత శక్తి సో అదే నిజం మన ఏలో రకరకాల మంది ఉంటారు నమ్మని వాళ్ళు ఉంటారు నమ్మే వాళ్ళు ఉంటారు రకరకాల మతాలకు సంబంధించిన వాళ్ళు ఉంటారు ఆడవాళ్ళు ఉంటారు మగవారు ఉంటారు వేరే అదే కొంచెం అన్ని రకాల వాళ్ళు ఉంటారు అందరూ ఎన్ని రకాల మనుషులు ఉంటారు మనం ఒకరికొకరు ఉన్నత శక్తి ఎవరైనా సరే మనం ఒకరికొకరు సహాయం చేసుకుంటాం ఈ స్టెప్స్ ద్వారా ఈ ట్రెడిషన్స్ ద్వారా సో అదే ఏలో గ్రేట్నెస్ నేను ఈ వన్ ఇయర్ వచ్చేసరికి డాలస్ వచ్చాను అప్పటికి ఇంకా జస్ట్ మూడో సోపాను అప్పుడప్పుడు అలా చేస్తున్నాను ఇన్వెంటరీకి మటుకు ఏంటంటే అప్పుడు మళ్ళీ ఇన్వెంటరీ రాయటం మొదలు పెట్టాం ఇన్వెంటరీ రాయటం మొదలు పెడితే మొత్తం నాలో ఉన్నదంతా బయటికి కక్కటం మొదలు పెట్టాను పేపర్ మీద ఆ పేపర్లు స్కాన్ చేసి టామ్ కి పంపించేవాడు నేను ఏమనుకున్నానంటే ముందు డాలస్ వచ్చాక ఇంకో లోకల్ స్పాన్సర్ని తీసుకుందాము అని ఇది కోవిడ్కి ముందండి ఇవన్నీ అయినా మేము అలాగే కంటిన్యూ అయిపోయాం ఎందుకంటే నా రిలేషన్షిప్ అంత బాగుండింది ఆయనతో ఆయన ఎప్పుడు ప్రేమగా ఉండాలి లేకపోతే ఎప్పుడు స్ట్రిక్ట్ గా ఉండాలి అలా ఉండేవాడు ఆయన నాతోటి సో రిలేషన్షిప్ బాగుండేది కాబట్టి మేము అలా కంటిన్యూ అయిపోయాం ఆయన స్కాన్ చేసి పంపించేవాడిని ఆయన ఏమో ఫోన్ లో డిస్కస్ చేసేవాళ్ళం మేము రాసింది ఇలాగ కంటిన్యూ అయితే నైన్ స్టెప్ కి రావడానికి బాగా కంగారుగా ఉండింది నాకు ఎందుకంటే ఎప్పుడు చేద్దాం ఈ ఎమెన్స్ అని చెప్పి సో నాకు పూర్తి విల్లింగ్నెస్ ఉండింది నైన్ స్టెప్ చేయడానికి అని చెప్తున్నాను ప్లీజ్ గో హెడ్ సారీ అబౌట్ దాట్ ఐ న్యూ దట్ ది ఎమెన్స్ వర్ గోన్ బి ఛాలెంజింగ్ బికాస్ ది ఐడియా of if somebody is 90% wrong and I'm 10% wrong and I'm going to have to own my part and not say a thing about yours <laughs> that is just that's really difficult for a guy like me but I knew that if I wanted to stay sober I was going to have to let go of a few lifelong conceptions as the book says and do this thing as best I could and so um You know, one thing I heard in a meeting that I love is that the the immense process is for me. It's really not for the other person. If they appreciate it or walk away feeling good, that's icing on the cake. But the immense is for me. The immense ultimately is me releasing somebody from the jail within my mind. And um, I always thought that was super powerful. Um, I um, I remember I had a cousin who... Um, I, I had, uh, I had gotten him drunk when he was a young kid. He was like 13 and, uh, he had kind of, he had always looked up to me growing up and I made an amends to him for, um, for some of that and some of the things that had happened in our childhood. And I remember when I asked him, is there any other way that I've harmed you that I haven't mentioned? He said, well, I never know which one of you I'm going to get if it's going to be um the fun drinking gambling one or if it's going to be this one who's all uptight <laughs> and 
I remember I was so angry and uh, I couldn't believe that he would say that to me. And I called my sponsor and I told him the story and he said, isn't that great feedback? You've been completely inconsistent with people in your family. They don't know if you're drinking or not or gambling or not or who you are because you're always going off and on the wagon. And it wasn't easy to hear those words, but it was true that I had not lived a consistent life and that people closest to me never knew who I was going to be because it was completely contingent on my relationship with alcohol, drugs, gambling, and other poor behavior. Translate, please. So, ఏంటంటే ఎమ్ఎన్స్ దగ్గరకు వచ్చేసరికి నాకు పెద్ద ప్రాబ్లం ఉండేది తొంభై పర్సెంట్ అవతల తప్పు ఉత్తి పది పర్సెంట్ నా తప్పు అయినా నేను వెళ్ళి ఎమ్ఎండ్ చేయాలా అది ఇదొక్క న్యాయం అనిపించేది కాకపోతే నేను సోబర్గా ఉండాలి అంటే అవతల తప్పులు పక్కకు పెట్టేసి నేను చెయ్యాలి నా కోసం నా సోబరైటీ కోసం చెయ్యాలి ముఖ్యంగా అవతల నా బుర్రలో ఉన్న జైలు నుంచి బయటకు విడుదల చేయాలి అవతల నా బుర్రలో పెట్టేసుకున్నాం జైల్లో అవతల ఉంది ఆ జైలు నుంచి వాళ్ళు విడదలు చేసి బయటికి పంపించేయాలి సో నా కోసం నేను చేయాలి అని చెప్పి చాలా కన్సెప్షన్స్ కూడా మనం పాత ఐడియాలు అన్ని పక్కకు పెట్టాలి కాబట్టి నేను వెళ్ళి అమెండ్ చేయడానికి సిద్ధపడ్డాను మా ఫ్యామిలీకి అమెండ్ చేస్తుంటే బేసిక్గా వాళ్ళు ఏమన్నారంటే అదే నువ్వు ఎప్పుడు ఎప్పుడు ఎలా ఉంటావో మాకు అర్థం కాదు వాళ్ళ స్పాన్సర్ అదే అన్నాడు చాలా నిజం కదా మనం ఎప్పుడు ఎలా ఉంటామో మనకే మనకే అర్థం కాదు ఎందుకంటే మనం ఎప్పుడు తాగుడు మీద లేకపోతే డ్రగ్స్ మీద ఆధారపడి ఉంటాము ఎప్పుడు తాగుతున్నావో తెలియదు మీ ఫ్యామిలీకి ఎప్పుడు సోబర్గా ఉన్నావో తెలియదు ఎప్పుడు గ్యాంబ్లింగ్ చేస్తున్నావో తెలియదు ఎప్పుడు గ్యాంబ్లింగ్ చేయట్లేదో తెలియదు ఆ కన్సిస్టెన్సీ లేదు ఆ కన్సిస్టెన్సీ లేకపోవటమే వాళ్ళకి భయాలు అది క్రియేట్ అదే అది నిజమే కదా అని వాళ్ళ స్పాన్సర్ చెప్పడం జరిగింది ప్లీజ్ గో హెడ్ రాబర్ట్ ఓకే గ్రేట్ సో మూవింగ్ ఎన్ టు ద ట్వెల్వ్ స్టెప్ వర్క్ ఐ ఐ ఫైండ్ దట్ దేర్ సమ్ థింగ్స్ దట్ ఆర్ సిమిలర్ బిట్వీన్ ద నైన్త్ అండ్ టెన్త్ ఆర్ ఎక్స్క్యూజ్ మీ ద ద నైన్త్ అండ్ ట్వెల్వ్ ఆమ్ దేర్ దేర్ ఇస్ అన్ ఐడియా హియర్ దట్ దీస్ స్టెప్స్ ఆర్ అబౌట్ ఎక్సిక్యూషన్ as opposed to the result because i don't get to control the result i don't get to control how somebody's going to handle my amends and i don't get to control whether a sponsee stays sober or not but my job is to do my amends and my job is to reach out um when it's appropriate um and so um that was kind of a new concept to me it wasn't about my will or pushing my agenda it was about simply executing the 12 steps and letting god handle the results of that work and so with the 12 step um one of my challenges especially early early on was letting my ego uh stay outside of that you know i i'm a professional salesperson commission only and um it's all about numbers and growth and and all that and like i i i have to do my best to not allow those mindsets to creep in to um the way i envision how i sponsor people because um it's not about how many sponsors i have and it's really not even about if they stay sober or not that's that's between them and god and um what what i what i have been taught and what i believe today is that my job is to be available it's to give my time it's it's to uh share my experience strength and hope uh but it's certainly not to um to glorify myself um and so i try my best to do that and uh i i i had a i i lost a sponsor this week he uh we were going to continue to likely be good friends but um he uh he wanted to do things his own way and that's absolutely fine um the only thing i really have to offer as a sponsor or as a sponsor is my experience in the way in which i work the 12 steps and um so uh i love 12 step work um i don't always love taking the phone call but i never um get off the call and wish i hadn't taken it you know so um as the book says on page 89 nothing will so much ensure immunity from drinking as intensive work with other alcoholics 
uh, the 12th step keeps me sober. A lot of that, uh, a lot of that work got me sober, but it's the 12th step, I think, that really um, helps me because every time I start working with a new person, I get to see the uh, the cunning, baffling, and powerful nature of alcoholism in the person across the table's eyes. Um, a few just final thoughts here. I know we're coming up on the end of the hour here is that um, meeting makers make it is something that I wish had been true for me the first time I went to Alcoholics Anonymous because I was very good at physically showing up to the meeting. But I would almost argue today that meeting makers who don't do the steps don't make it because that's my experience. Meeting makers who do the steps do make it. Um, and I just think it's really important to, to note that because that's my experience. Um, I could not do this thing by just physically showing up and hoping that the, uh, the spiritual work that you guys did would bleed onto me. I had to do that work. Um, the other thing I'd say is I really don't understand God today. I don't know a lot about God. And the more I get into this stuff, the more I realize how little I know. And I have found a lot of freedom in that. Um, when I was a young man, I used to think if I prayed hard enough and read hard enough and and asked enough questions, then I was entitled to understand God's motives and what he was doing. And uh, today I am completely content uh, with not really understanding any of that. You know, I, uh, I do the best I can. Um, I love my friends and family and my sponsor. And um, Alcoholics Anonymous has given me an incredible life um, that is so much better of the isolation and uh, complete addiction to instant gratification that I had before I did the step work. Um, and then also, I would just say that just because I got sober doesn't mean that the world changed. In fact, nothing changed in the world. Um, I'm way too small for um, for that to, to happen, obviously. But what did happen with me is that my perspective changed. And so the world changed because I see it differently. And so it's very important for me to realize that just because Robert decides to get sober doesn't mean people aren't going to cut him off on the highway and the airplane's going to be on time and everything's going to go my way because none of that happened. But what happened is by using the tools of Alcoholics Anonymous, I can function in this world and hopefully be somewhat helpful to my fellow man. And finally, the last thing I'll say it's just a passage from the book that I always love to read. And this is on page 89, the second paragraph. Um, life will take on new meaning to watch people recover, to see them help others, to watch loneliness vanish. And just like this call is doing, to see a fellowship grow up among uh, about you. Eight years ago, I had no clue I'd ever be talking to people in India. And that is really cool. To have a host of friends, this is an experience you must not miss. We know you will not want to miss it. Frequent contact with newcomers and with each other is the bright spot of our lives. Uh, thank you so much for letting me share today. I really appreciate it. Karthik, are you there? Yeah. So, in a one third and ten, um, Tundo Sopananiki, Panindo Sopananiki, Godajala connection on the end Kante, Tundo Sopano Logoda, Othro Lala react out through the Ligo, Panindo Sopano Logodeno, Othalamanski help chas Napudo and sober on Tada, sober on Rodogoda Natilidu. Ah, Mukinga intent. Nadi Uti, Niche, eight away, Napani. Friends can own Tamo. Kakput intente, intente, my Yavar Yala sober on Taru, another Nathalie, Nan, Yala practice Yastano Pan and so far. Adin air pinched no hotel of Pani, Pratisari phone call of Chinabre, Anandang, Tastan and Gadu. A proper Chirag than at the Chuka, the phone a peca matun and a puru voda, announcer and a phone at ten and a matu a pura and college. Oh, the program. Mukinga Nenu practice say to a Prapanchuante Maripole Dun any program practice chastanant group, Prapancho Alagonde, 
కదా నేను ప్రపంచాన్ని ఎలా చూస్తానో అది మారింది నా నా దృక్పథి మారింది ప్రపంచం పట్ల ఆల్కహాలిక్స్ అనానమస్ ఈ ప్రోగ్రామ్ నా స్పాన్సర్ మీరంతా నాకు చాలా ఇచ్చారు దేవ నేను ఈ రోజుకి అర్థం చేసుకోలేను ఎందుకంటే నాకు ఇప్పుడు అది పర్లేదు అర్థం చేసుకోకపోయినా పర్లేదు ముక్తి ప్రోగ్రామ్ ప్రాక్టీస్ చేసుకుంటూ వెళ్తాను దేవుడు నాకు అర్థం అవ్వాల్సిన లేదు అని చెప్పి నేను ఎప్పుడు ఏమనుకునే ఉన్నంటే ఎన్ని చదివేస్తే అవన్నీ చదివేస్తే దేవుడు అర్థం అవుతాడని దేవుడు అర్థం కాలేదు నాకు కాలేదు సో పర్లేదు నాకు దేవుడు అర్థం అవ్వాల్సిన అవసరం లేదు నేను జస్ట్ ప్రోగ్రామ్ ప్రాక్టీస్ చేయాలంటే నాకు ఫలితాలు రావడానికి నాకేదో పది మంది స్పాన్సీలు ఉండాలి ఇవన్నీ ఇది కాదు విషయం నే నాకు ఎంతమంది ఉంటే అంతమంది ఉంటారు ఎంతమంది సోబరగా ఉంటే అంతమంది సోబరగా ఉంటారు ఎంతమంది మార్చుకుంటే అంతమంది మార్చుకుంటారు నా పని ఒకటే నేను ఇతరులకు సహాయం చేయడానికి సమయం కేటాయించాలి అది ఒకటే నా పని ఇంకేది నా పని కాదు అని చెప్తున్నారు అలాగే లాస్ట్లో లాస్ట్లో నూట అరవై నాలుగో పేజీలో ఉంటుంది ఏంటంటే మనం మన మిత్ర మండలిలో అందరూ ఎదగటం చూస్తాం బోల్డ్ మంది స్నేహితులు అవుతారు మన ఒంటరితనం మాయమైపోతుంది ఈ అద్భుతమైన జీవితంలోకి మనం ప్రవేశిస్తామని ఉంటుంది దాని గురించి చదివి అలాగే నా జీవితం అద్భుతంలో అద్భుతంగా ఉంది ఈరోజు అని చెప్తున్నారు మనకి ధన్యవాదాలు కూడా చెప్పారు ఓకే సో వీ హ్యావ్ ఎగ్జాక్ట్లీ ఫోర్ మినిట్స్ సో లెట్స్ ఓపెన్ అప్ ఫర్ క్వశ్చన్స్ 